Well, good evening. Welcome to St Andrew's Church for Night Prayer on this, the 6th of May, 2021. Um, the readings that I posted earlier on for tonight, uh, I, I realise are incorrect. For some reason, um, on my plan, uh, or the plan that I sent out a little on extra, it had the same readings for yesterday and for today. And so I've double checked. And so the readings for tonight are from Acts chapter 15, verses 7 to 21, not 1 to 6. So Acts 15, 7 to 21. And we're also reading from Psalm 96, verses 1 to 3 and 7 to 10. And finally, we've got John's Gospel, chapter 15, and verses 9 to 11. So hopefully you have those readings. Uh, and so I'll remind us, remind you when we come to do those in a moment. So Acts uh, 15, 7 to 20, 21, uh, Psalm 96, 1 to 3, and 7, verses 7 to 10, and John 15, 9 to, 7, 9 to 11. And we're using the night prayer, the, the daily prayer booklet, which there's a link for on the posting that I put earlier on, and hopefully you have that in front of you. And now I'm actually not in Darlington, I'm across in Kendall, um, just uh, with my day off tomorrow, so we came across tonight. Um, so I'm streaming from Darlington, and even though it says the night prayer for, from St Andrew's Church, it's actually from Gandhi Street in Kendall. But it's good to be able to be here and sharing with you. So as we gather together, let's um, remember that we're in God's presence wherever we are. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. And that's in Deuteronomy 33 verses, verse 27. So the Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And we say together, who made heaven and earth. A pause just to bring those things that we need to to God at the end of this day um, the things we can lay down things that perhaps have been difficult for us as well as things which have been a joy for us so let's just have a moment of reflection as we lay those things those things down to God I just want to say a prayer of thanks for this day. Father God, we do thank you for all that you've given us this day. Those things that we've really enjoyed and those things that have been a struggle. We thank you that each day we have the opportunity of serving you. And as we draw to the end of this day, we thank you for the blessings you've given to us and the strength you've given to us. And we ask that you would enable us to rest tonight and also be, to be ready to serve you when we start a new day tomorrow. In Jesus' name. Amen. So save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And our psalm for tonight is Psalm 96, um, which hopefully you can find. Psalm 96. As I said, I mentioned at the beginning of this evening that I posted the wrong readings um, because I'd got an error in the information I'd sent out in the little and extra. For some reason, I put both um, sets of readings for uh, today and yesterday as being the same. Anyway, we're on uh, so Psalm 96 and verses 1 to 3 and then verses 7 to 10. And this is a wonderful psalm. It's... Um, uh, I think it's one of the Psalms of Ascent which were, were to declaring God's glory as they went up to the uh, temple in Jerusalem. So the psalmist says, Sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous deeds among the peoples. And then down to verse 7. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. 
Worship the Lord in the splendour of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established, it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. You may have recognised um, some words that perhaps we have sung and do sing in church. Sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the, all the earth. Certainly there's one that I remember. Um, a, a wonderful hymn, worship, o Lord, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, bow down before him, his glory proclaim. And there's a, uh, some wonderful hymns that have been written using the words of the Psalms. And it's good and right that we should praise the Lord, sing his praise, because that's part of what it means to be God's followers, part of what it means to be worshipping the Lord. So it's good that uh, as we gather together, we can sing praise to God. And one of the difficulties I think we've had in certainly in our public worship uh, during COVID um, has been that we've not been able to sing. We've been able to listen to sing to, to hymns, but not been able to, to sing hymns. And that's been a great, for me, a great um, loss to our worship together. And I suppose one of the joys perhaps of having worship online is that we've not been restricted then because we've been in our own homes and you've had nobody else listen to you. So it doesn't matter whether you've got a good voice or a not so good voice. You can sing at the top of your voice, provided other people in the house don't mind. But certainly as we look forward to lockdown being lifted in new ways, it's good, I hope, that we can begin to sing praise to God, as the psalmist says. So moving on to our Acts reading, Acts chapter 15, in the New Testament part of our Bibles. And we're reading verses 7 to 21. Just a bit of a background to this reading. Um, this is... Um, Paul and Barnabas have been on their missionary journeys um, through parts of Asia and into Greece. And um, they have, in their journeys, encountered Gentiles who have um, come to faith. But there was a bit of a struggle going on because the Jewish believers were saying, well, in order to be fully Christian, you had to be fully Jew. Jewish, which meant you had to be circumcised, certainly for the men, which was quite a big ask. And, and Paul has been arguing and Barnabas has been arguing that this isn't necessary because that's just an outward sign um, that the Jewish nation um, was, was asked to, to do. Why should the Gentiles have to perform that physical um, change rather than just be changed in their hearts? And um, so they've been gone back to Jerusalem to the, the Christian leaders in Jerusalem of whom Peter was the, the uh, main leader there. And, and they've been asking, well, or given their, their case, presenting their case to the, the council in Jerusalem to say, look, this really isn't necessary. Actually, what God, look, God looks at is actually whether our hearts have been circumcised, not our flesh. And so this is picking up the, the, the story of, of having presented their case um, or in the process of presenting their case, this is what they say. So Acts chapter 15 and verses 7 through to 21. After much discussion, Peter got up and addressed them. Brothers, you know that some time ago God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. God, who knows the heart, showed that he accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them as he did to us. He made no distinction between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. Now then, why do, you, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of the disciples a yoke that neither we nor our fathers have been able to bear? No, we believe that it is through grace, through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we are saved just as they are. The whole assembly became silent as they listened to Barnabas and Paul, telling about the miraculous signs and wonders that God had done among the Gentiles through them. When they finished, James spoke up, Brothers, listen to me. Simon had described to us how God at first showed his concern by taking from the Gentiles a people for himself. The words of the prophets 
are in agreement with this, as it is written. After this, I will return and rebuild David's fallen tent. Its ruins I will rebuild and I will restore it, that the remnant, that the remnant of men may seek the Lord and all the Gentiles who bear, his, bear my name, says the Lord, who does these things that have been done, that have been known for ages. It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Instead, we should write to them, telling them to abstain from food polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from the meat of strangled animals, and from blood. For Moses has been preached in every way from the earliest time, every city from the earliest times, and is read by the synagogues on every Sabbath. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So there is the importance of discussing and debating and coming to a common mind in line with what scripture says. And that's quite a challenge for us in, in the decisions perhaps that we have to take as a church. And some of those decisions are ongoing, have been in the past and will be over all various different issues. One that, that is up and coming in, in recent months, which um, the churches will be hearing about, certainly the Church of England churches, is the question of human sexuality. And that's being debated um, at the moment um, within Deanery Synod and um, Dyson Synod, and also will be debated at PCCs across the country. And so it's important that when we have big decisions, and for this, for, for, the, for the early Christians, this was a big decision about um, practices that, that the Jews had been accustomed to and about how that was to relate to other cultures and particularly Gentiles come to faith and what that meant for them. So the question of reasoning and debate and lining up the scripture and seeking God's mind is very valid for all time and for us in this time. Let's now look at our gospel reading from John. It's interesting that this actually is one of the readings that we're using on Sunday morning in our service, which is all about Christian aid. And so this is um, Jesus speaking to the disciples the evening before he was going to be crucified that Monday, Thursday. And he's, there's a long dialogue that goes on um, really from for, for really the, the latter half of John's gospel. Um, right from um, John 13, right through to to um, the point he's crucified in about John 18, um, and so on. So this is a dialogue that, these are the words that Jesus is saying to uh, those disciples um, around that meal. He just talked about being the vine and... Uh, his followers, his disciples, being the branches and producing much fruit. So now we're looking at verses 9 to 11 of John chapter 15. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and your joy may be complete. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Quite a challenge, isn't it? If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. It's a challenge for us, isn't it, to remain in God's love, to remain obedient to him, to be submissive to him, to listen to him, to read his word, to know what it is he calls us to do. And he tells us this so that our joy may com be complete. He wants us to be full of joy, joy-filled people. Sometimes we don't manage to do that, do we? Sometimes we allow the different events and the different situations we go through to quench the joy that God gives us. And that's why, going back to our psalm, it's good to, to use things like psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to remind us actually that whatever we're feeling, whatever we're going through, actually we can still rejoice. 
and, and it's a it's sometimes it's a decision we have to take and often the psalmist um, describes how they're going through difficult times but ends up with saying but yet I will praise the Lord and and so it's been my experience that when we go through difficult times often the way to help us through them is to keep praising the Lord we don't always feel like it but actually as we begin to praise the Lord my experience has been that he helps us to change our perspective to see things differently to see things from God's perspective and to uh, uh, even through the difficulties to feel and sense something of God's goodness and God's blessing because actually whatever we go through is always seasonal we will never endure anything that is going to go on forever the only thing that we know that is going to go on forever which is a good thing which is through faith in Jesus our eternal life with him everything else is transient and that perhaps can also be a reminder to us that we can praise the Lord even through the difficult times so with that in mind let's uh, turn to prayer and we can bring to God those things perhaps that we are struggling with those things that are difficult for us at this time. So Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you are a good God. We thank you that you are a God who is gracious to us and loves us. We thank you that your love endures forever. And Father, we pray that you would encourage us when we go through difficult times to know the reality of your presence with us. Help us, Lord, to be able to sustain, be sustained by your love and to know your presence with us, especially through those difficult times. And Father, we lift to you this night those who are struggling in body, mind or spirit. And it might be that you've got people that you want to offer to God at this time. Let's just bring their names to God in a moment of quietness. holding those people before God perhaps as we have our hands out before him those people that we've mentioned this prayer which is prayer for, a prayer for them merciful God we entrust to your unfailing and tender care this night those who are ill or in pain those who are struggling in body mind or spirit knowing that whenever danger threatens your everlasting arms are there to hold us safe comfort and heal them and restore them to health and strength through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And it's right and proper that we should pray tonight for the local elections that have gone on. Hopefully those of you who have been able to have been to your nearest polling station to pray for your local councillors or in Darlington we've also been praying for um, the um, Teesside Mayor or voting for the pre-site side, side mayor we've probably been praying for them as well and also for the um, crime committee the um, police commissioners in our area and for some of you you will have been voting perhaps for local politicians and MPs even in Hartlepool and places like that so Father God we thank you that you give us the ability to to make decisions for the greater good for the wider community we pray for all those who are standing for election. We pray that you would be very much at the heart of those elections, even though they are um, organised by humankind. We pray, Lord, that there will be a divine element to them and that the right people will be elected for the right reasons to bring about just and good causes. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, we also want to bring before you this night um, all our plans and preparations for the future. We pray particularly for the decisions that are taken um, in these coming days about the roadmap and the journey out of lockdown. We pray, Lord, that you would bless those decision makers. We pray, Lord, you would help us to um, be sensitive 
and also cautious where needed. And Father, we pray particularly that you would help us as a nation to journey back into a sense of greater communal activity and sharing with one another, which we miss so much. But at this time, we also want to pray particularly for India, for those who are really struggling because of a much weaker health system and lack of um, medical support, lack of vaccinations, poverty, difficulties in moving around and getting to safe places. And Father, for other countries that are struggling with uh, a very high number of cases of coronavirus and deaths, we pray particularly for Brazil, Argentina, and perhaps other parts of the world that we hear nothing about. And so in some respects, those cases are hidden. But we'll all be thank you that certainly in Britain and in many parts of the world, we're beginning to see a, a route out of this terrible pandemic. We ask for equity in sharing vaccines across the world. And we ask that you would enable us to learn the lessons that have been taught to us through this time. In Jesus' name, Amen. And for ourselves now, as we prepare to come towards the end of our time together, be present, O Lord, and protect us to the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this world may rest upon your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And for our homes, the individual places that we dwell in, visit this place, your place, wherever you are, O Lord, we pray and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us in peace, and may your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we're going to pray together the, the Lord's Prayer, which we'll say in its contemporary form. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So in peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Well, thank you for joining me tonight and for those who are going to be joining later on, I pray God's blessing on you and pray that you will know a peaceful night and also be refreshed and ready to serve God again tomorrow. So may the Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. So do please uh, have a restful night and join us again tomorrow night at seven o'clock for night prayer and on Saturday night. And then again, if you'd like to join us on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. or soon after for our morning service, our stream service. If you also want to join us in church, you can do that for the 10 o'clock service. But do please pre-book with our parish office. And uh, uh, it'd be great to, to continue sharing with you. So uh, may God bless you. And uh, we pray that we will see you again soon. So many thanks and God's blessing.